From space, the scale of Hurricane Melissa is staggering, a massive spiral of white fury spinning toward Jamaica. Satellite imagery reveals a perfect, terrifying symmetry, bands of dense clouds rotating around a central eye, nearly 40 kilometers wide, drawing energy from the ocean below. Meteorologists describe it as one of the most powerful systems ever recorded in the Caribbean, sustained winds reaching 185 miles per hour, or nearly 300 kilometers per hour, with gusts pushing beyond that. The barometric pressure has dropped below 910 millibars, placing Melissa among the strongest tropical cyclones in modern history. From the cockpit of a reconnaissance aircraft, the view is surreal. As the plane penetrates the eyewall, the turbulence is relentless, the aircraft buffeted like a toy in the wind. Lightning flashes through sheets of cloud, illuminating the violent rotation. And then, suddenly, calm, the eye of the storm. Inside, the scene defies belief. A vast, circular void opens beneath a brilliant blue sky, surrounded by towering walls of cloud spinning like the inside of a colossal amphitheater. This is nature's paradox, peace at the very center of chaos. But that peace will not last. As the storm tightens its spiral, pressure drops further. The eye wall, the most violent region, becomes a ring of destruction. Radar imagery shows wind speeds fluctuating between 280 and 305 km per hour. These are the kinds of forces that can tear roofs from buildings, uproot trees, and turn debris into deadly projectiles. Forecasters warn that Jamaica lies directly in its path. Evacuation orders have been issued for low-lying coastal areas. Emergency shelters are filling up. Across Kingston, Montego Bay, and St. Elizabeth Parish, residents brace for impact. Onboard instruments detect turbulence levels rarely seen outside laboratory simulations. The crew of the Hurricane Hunters, veterans of a hundred storms, describe this one as, alive, a system pulsing with energy and unpredictable bursts of motion. As the camera lingers inside the eye, sunlight cuts through the clouds like a cathedral dome. The beauty is hypnotic, but fleeting. The outer wall is closing in, a moving barrier of wind, water, and lightning that will soon crash ashore. The pilot's voice crackles through the intercom. We're exiting the eye. Brace for re-entry. Moments later, the aircraft slams back into the storm. Visibility drops to zero. Outside, the sky turns white, a roaring wall of rain and fury as Melissa's full force bears down on Jamaica. From a small veranda camera in Black River, the violence of the storm becomes undeniable. The footage trembles as gusts surpass 280 km per hour, bending palm trees nearly to the ground. Rain lashes sideways in thick, blinding sheets. The wind howls like a living creature, shaking windows, tearing shingles loose from rooftops. By dawn, the true horror unfolds. Streets across St. Elizabeth and Santa Cruz have transformed into rivers. Torrents of brown water rush through towns, carrying debris, uprooted trees, and vehicles alike. Cars bob helplessly, colliding with each other as currents surge through once busy intersections. Drone footage captures people waving desperately from rooftops, signaling for rescue. Entire homes are submerged up to their windows. Bridges have collapsed, cutting off access to nearby villages. Power lines hang low over the water, sparking as waves slap against them. Local voices crackle through radio static, first responders struggling to reach stranded families. Emergency crews are overwhelmed. The main highway linking Kingston to the southern coast lies buried beneath landslides. Helicopters circle overhead, searching for dry ground to land. In Lakovia, floodwaters have turned the town square into a vast lake. Furniture, signs, and market stalls drift together in slow, chaotic motion. Residents clutch what they can carry, children, pets, bags of food, wading chest deep through currents that could sweep them away at any moment. Further west, in Black River Parish, the hospital's roof has been ripped off. Medical teams operate by flashlight as the storm rages outside. Power is gone, communication lines down. 
We are in the dark, one nurse says through tears. We can't even hear the outside world anymore. The sound of the wind is unrelenting. A deep, constant roar, like a freight train passing inches away. Every gust brings new destruction. Vehicles overturn. Tin roofs slice through the air. Street signs bend and twist like paper. The death toll remains uncertain. Authorities confirm several fatalities but fear many more are trapped or missing. The government has declared a state of emergency. Over half a million residents are without power. Tens of thousands have sought shelter in schools and churches turned into makeshift evacuation centers. Yet even amid the chaos, moments of human courage emerge. Neighbors forming chains to rescue the elderly. Fishermen using boats to evacuate stranded families. In Montego Bay, volunteers are seen guiding children through knee-high water to safety. From above, Jamaica looks scarred, entire neighborhoods swallowed by mud and floodwater. Fields once green are now brown and flattened. The country's agricultural heartland, the breadbasket of St. Elizabeth, is gone, crops drowned, livestock scattered. This is not merely a storm, it's a national catastrophe. The Prime Minister's voice, broadcast over emergency radio, trembles as he calls the event, the worst Jamaica has seen in living memory. The skies remain grey. Rain continues to fall in waves. The danger is not over, landslides, disease, and contamination now threaten survivors. And across the island, one question echoes through every broken street, how long will it take to rebuild?
Hours later, as Hurricane Melissa drifts north toward Cuba, the silence it leaves behind is haunting. Drone cameras rise slowly over St. Elizabeth, revealing an ocean of wreckage. From the air, rooftops lie scattered like confetti. Entire villages look erased. Roads are cracked open, bridges collapsed into muddy torrents. The turquoise coastlines of Jamaica are now streaked with brown, where rivers have spilled their banks and poured sediment into the sea. Smoke curls from damaged transformers. The only sound left is the hum of distant generators and the slosh of water against walls. The scope of destruction is staggering. Power outages stretch across the island. Telecommunications are down in more than half of all parishes. Water systems are contaminated. Emergency teams move cautiously through the debris. Helicopters drop food and medical supplies to isolated areas. Families emerge from shelters, dazed, silent, staring at what remains of their homes. The air smells of salt, mud, and splintered wood. The once bustling streets of Santa Cruz and Black River now look like ghost towns. Vehicles lie overturned, tangled in trees. The local school stands roofless, its classrooms filled with debris and water. International aid is beginning to arrive. Relief groups from the United States, Canada, and the United Nations coordinate flights into Kingston's airport, now serving as an emergency hub. For the people of Jamaica, the storm has passed, but the real struggle is only beginning. The nation faces months, perhaps years, of rebuilding. And as the drone pans higher into the sky, we see the scale of what's been lost, a wounded island, resilient yet forever changed by Hurricane Melissa.